A mysterious interstellar object is changing its trajectory in a weird way as it gets closer to Earth. We're going to talk about this news in today's video, and we'll also discuss this video that was released during a hearing in the US Congress, which supposedly shows a UFO being hit by a missile. It could be a spaceship in the background. I also got Michael West's take on what they thought about this video. Michael West is a researcher who usually tries to find plausible answers to mysteries like the one we're looking at here. So, let's tackle those two points, right? And the third topic, which will kick off today's video, is about a phenomenon that's got astronomers really curious. A gamma-ray burst detected billions of light years away, and it lasted a whole day. It's a really strong energy burst way out beyond our galaxy, and this might be a new cosmic object that hasn't been catalogued yet. Welcome aboard the Uranus spaceship. I'm Roman Ride, physicist, astrophysicist, and Uranus quantum engineer. I'm also the host of this program, where I bring you the latest news about space, technology, and the most exciting discoveries in the cosmos. And if you like the way I bring you this info or the info itself and want to support me, it's super easy. Just drop a like down below, that helps a lot. And maybe leave a comment too, right? <laughs> Now, let's get into it and talk about this crazy universe, starting with this new cosmic event that's got scientists scratching their heads trying to figure it out. Not just any matter, but the data shared by EXO revealed a never-before-seen cosmic event that caught astronomers' attention. This event already has a name, the Gamma Ray Burst GRB 250702B, that's what it's called. The first alerts pointed toward the plane of the Milky Way but the very large telescope, the VLT from ESO, that's the one I really want to visit someday, using the HAWKI camera, pinpointed the real origin in a galaxy outside our own. So, it's not from here, it's from another galaxy. The Hubble Space Telescope confirmed the discovery, that means the event is outside our galaxy, so it's way more powerful than if it were nearby, because if this object were close, like right here in the centre, this page from EXO is where they're sharing the data they found about it. So, if it were in our galaxy, it would be a powerful explosion, but still, you know, close. Now, the fact that it's billions of light years away makes things more complicated. It's an object that's really far out there. It was really far away and shone super bright. Usually, gamma ray bursts last from milliseconds to a few minutes. They're quick events and don't repeat because the source gets destroyed in the process, like a black hole feeding on a star, or something like that. So, the source is wiped out, meaning these flashes don't last long. But this guy, GRB 250702B, lasted about a whole day and had intermittent pulses, something that's never been seen in 50 years. Observations like this are pretty rare. So, here we are, encountering something unusual. Enjoy it, right? Because this is something you don't see every day, literally. The main scenario considered, the hypotheses the study's authors are trying to explain, is that it could be a white dwarf that got torn apart by the gravitational force of an intermediate mass black hole, something between 100 and 100,000 times the mass of the Sun. We haven't detected a black hole like that yet, you know? It's a, a hard-to-find object, but it would be pretty interesting. This process could produce a long-lasting, repetitive high-energy signal. Still, other possibilities are on the table, like extreme stellar collapse or some exotic accretion mechanisms. But honestly, these are just guesses. We really don't know what it is yet. The candidate host galaxy seems to be billions of light-years away, but confirming that depends on spectroscopic measurements. If that turns out to be true, the energy, the energy released is huge, even by gamma ray burst standards, it would be crazy for an explosion to be detected from so far away. Plus, this actually happened billions of years ago, right? Because of the distance, the light takes a long time to get here. It travels at the speed of light, doesn't it? So it took all that time, billions of years, to reach our lenses, the ones used by the ESO for detection. Right now, Scientific teams are tracking this leftover glow using instruments like VLTX Shotter and others. 
The James Webb Space Telescope's goal is to figure out the redshift, which basically tells us how far away the object is, and to study its environment while looking for signs of supernovae or stellar disruption events. This data will be crucial to confirm or rule out existing models. So, to sum it up, GRB 250702b is a gamma-ray burst from outside our galaxy. It's long, lasts a whole day, and repeats, which doesn't fit any current models. Maybe we're onto something new here. Guys, we're talking about the birth of a new kind of cosmic object, cosmic explosions, which might be the source of this thing here, huh? What do you guys think? When I get updates on this object, I'll bring them to you. To not miss anything, you know the drill. Subscribe to the channel and drop a like to show some support. Now, let's talk about this little guy here. The UFO, right? I think it was released on Tuesday. So yeah, yesterday, I showed you this object and gave my take. I said, I thought it was a balloon. I argued that in the Lehman area, where this recording was made, there are a lot of conflicts and military exercises, right? Among these exercises, there are missile tests. They launch balloons, which are targeted and hit by these missiles during test events or military exercises. These balloons are filled with hot air, you know? Sometimes the missiles even have heat detectors. So yeah, it's basically a training. This is where the thermal camera comes in. So, a hot object shows up with this white glow, and a lot of people... They talked about it, right? But the inside is white, and the skin is dark. A cool skin, in this case, you know? So it's unusual. But it's not really unusual, people. When a balloon is picked up by thermal cameras, obviously, the inside is warm, right? So it's going to glow, but the outer layer, the covering of that warm air inside, touches the wind, and depending on the outside temperature, the heat inside the balloon reaches its outer layer and ends up dissipating. The heat dissipates, it cools down, so that's detected by the heat camera, meaning there's nothing unusual here. So that was my take, right? Like I said yesterday, I'm not sure, but that's what I think, considering the location and the year it was recorded. So, that was my opinion. Then this afternoon, I went to check out more opinions, hear what others were saying, because like I mentioned yesterday, I didn't come to a definite conclusion. You know? So, I wanted to research and find out what other people think. Then, I went to the page of... Michael West does some really cool research too. Honestly, I get a lot of inspiration from his work. It's kind of similar, right? He sits there with his box of videos and goes through them, analysing everything. Michael Ash's work is really great. He uses it a lot and is pretty thorough when investigating. And he came to the same conclusion I did. He thinks it's probably a balloon. He wasn't 100% sure either, but he said, because of the speed. It seems like it. It's got the full parallax effect, right? Yeah, that feeling of speed, how the object falls and all that. He thinks it's a test balloon, you know? A target balloon. That's the conclusion he came to. And also Avalobi. Avalobi analysed the case by comparing the missile data, right? It's 440 metres per second, plus 1.3, 145 kilograms, with an object. The impact seemed like just a glancing blow without the warhead detonating. I'll just keep the video playing here, breaking down the peripheral parts, you know? So yeah, the missile usually has a device that makes it explode when... It hits the target, but it looks like it just grazed the object so it didn't explode, according to Avilop's analysis. Oh, the size and speed of the AP, the UFO, a few metres, right? And everything matches up. It's really small. A small object matching one of the Samad drones used by the Houthi, you know, who had attacked Israel with multiple drones back then, right? So he looked into that history, and at the time this was recorded, there were a lot of attacks with that drone model that Avalope mentioned. He speculates, so he thinks the UFO is something like this, a Samad 3, right? The conclusion is that the object filmed was probably a Samad drone, not alien technology. In his opinion, he even says in his text that there are way more interesting videos than this one, ones that really don't have an explanation, but this isn't one of them. He said that if you look into the history of the place and everything, it's probably a drone attack or some military thing. You know? 
And that was basically his opinion too. I don't think so. I said drone, I said balloon, right? But that's also possible, right? The way the object is falling, it's kind of flexible, so that's why I said it looked like a balloon. Mike Wester was even more direct in his criticism about releasing this material. He said that before they put this out at the public hearing, they should have checked it first, like what we're doing now. Like, where exactly was this recorded? Are there any military conflicts in that area? Are there missile tests going on there? Local, right. Trying to connect the dots with the evidence to rule it out, you know, to see if it's really something unidentified, if it's actually a UFO. But they didn't do that, according to Michael West here. He said he has no doubt it's something ordinary, nothing unusual. What do you think? That's what I think. I'll keep following it because the congressman who shared this video said the object, this material, is being analysed by independent researchers. And soon we'll have more. Just wanted to give you an update on this. When there's news, I'll bring it to you here. To make sure you don't miss anything, you know the drill. Subscribe to the channel. Now, let's dive into this story with a pretty interesting headline, right? They say here, a mysterious interstellar object is changing its trajectory in an unexplained way as it gets closer to Earth. So what are they talking about exactly? I'm going to go over what they're saying in this article. Meanwhile, I'll leave the video from the three eye atlas right here. Rolling back there for you to check out, right? This object that's been causing quite a buzz. So basically, here's what they're saying. The object between Elatris and Atris is showing similar behaviour as it moves through the solar system. Besides the colour change, from red to green, which I already mentioned in Tuesday's video, I think Tuesday, astronomers have noticed its path seems to be changing in an unexpected way, due to the way the dust clouds are spreading out. It doesn't follow the usual patterns of comments. Then they say here that recent data shows intense emissions of cyanide and nickel that increase as the object gets closer to the sun. And they mention that the most intriguing detail is the nickel showing up without iron, which is really rare in nature and typical of industrial processes, right? I've already talked about nickel without iron here on the channel, and I'm bringing it up again for those who didn't see the video. Scientists say this could happen for two reasons. First, because of the chemistry. It's different. You know, nickel has a different chemistry than iron. And the NC evaporates more easily. It doesn't need as much heat to evaporate, so it ends up being more visible, it sublimates more, and is easier for instruments to detect. Iron sometimes stays trapped in the ice, in the material of the object. It might release a weak gas, but it tends to stay trapped. It'll be released when it gets hotter, closer to the sun. And there's another hypothesis too. Explaining the absence of iron, well, the instrument used at the VT didn't have enough sensitivity to pick up the weak iron emissions. So it doesn't mean the iron isn't there. Maybe the iron is there, evaporating more slowly and in smaller amounts than the nickel and the instrument just wasn't sensitive enough to detect it. So it looks like the nickel doesn't have iron, but the iron might actually be there. It doesn't mean it's not, you know? So we'd have to... This has happened before, right. We detected iron without iron, and then later observations found both gases in previous comets that passed through here. Anyway, they say here that while the Austrian team of scientists interprets these phenomena, this stuff is based on data collected by scientists from Austria. So, while the Austrian team interprets the object's phenomena, like Tresius, as comet activity, they say it's a comet. They mention here that the villain suggests these chemical anomalies and unusual paths might hint at a technological origin. The 3 I Atlas asteroid is supposed to get closest to Earth on December 19, 2025, at a distance similar to that between our planet and Mars. So, the closest the 3 IATLAS will get to us is basically the same distance Mars is from us. It's going to be really far. It's not actually coming close to us, right? Then they make a comparison here, comparing it to other visitors. Interstellar objects are really unique. This one's different from Mamu, who didn't have any gases or dust coming off it. Also different from Borisov, which was more of a typical comet, with a tail and all. The text says this one shows colour changes behind it, like that glow you see at the front facing the sun, with weird shapes, unusual missions and strange paths, so it's still unclear if it's just a comet or something weird. And about its path, you probably notice the text doesn't say much. 
trajectory, right? They mention it at the beginning, but they don't really go into it much, you know? The title makes you think the comet changed direction, right? They say here that the mysterious interstellar object changes its trajectory. From what I understand, this thing about changing trajectory might just be the way they expressed it, which could be a bit ambiguous, you know? Because they mention here, right? Where's the part where they talk about it? Oh yeah, the cloud of... dust? No, no, that's not it. It's exactly that, see? The dust cloud didn't act like we expected, right? And the comet started showing this sublimation behaviour away from the sun, which usually doesn't happen because the comet is cold, you know? But the comet was already really active. It's like it skipped a stage in its evolution. So, I think that word they used in the article refers more to that, not that it changed direction or anything. Yeah, so we can swap out trajectory for evolution. Evolution is the path it follows as a comet, so it's like it's jumping around, flipping some chapters of its story as a comet. That's what I think, especially since I looked into it when you sent me this. Actually, you've been sending me this article for like four months. I went to research it and thought, did I miss something? I searched for scientific papers on changing trajectory, but didn't find anything. What I... I found an article, uh, a post on Medium, which is Avilobi's blog, where he suggests that to be sure if this object is artificial or not, we'd have to wait until it gets close to the sun to see if it changes its path. Like, slowing down, or doing something a comet wouldn't do. So, he said we should keep an eye on that, watch how it moves, when it's near the sun. See if its movement is purely gravitational, because all the movement recorded so far has been. The 3 I atlas delay is due to gravity. The initial gravity gave it a boost, creating a gravitational slingshot effect at some point in its history, and when it got here to the solar system, the sun's gravitational pull is causing that effect, even making it speed up. So up until now, everything we're seeing is just gravity at work. Al Vobe suggests that maybe when it gets close to the sun, it might change, which could mean it's artificial, but as I always say, I'm saying here, Object 3 I Atlas has been acting way more like a comet than a spaceship. You know, even though it's moving in a weird pattern and at a different speed, it's definitely strange. In fact, just this week, scientists started classifying it as something totally new. It's a new cosmic body, something we've never seen before, so it's so unusual that they're already labelling it as a new kind of object. But despite all that, most of the scientific community, even this text says, considers Alvobe an exception. Everyone's already saying he acts like a comment, tail, gas, sublimation and all that stuff, but if he does anything else weird, I'll update you here. To not miss anything, you know the drill, subscribe to the channel. Alright guys, that's it from me, I'll catch you in the next video. See you, space cowboy.